In boxing, what happens in the corner can be the difference between winning and losing. And when the stakes are that high, it often brings out all kinds of emotions. You can't handle your speed, son. From motivational pep talks to throwing in the towel, these are 10 memorable corner moments. After knocking Steve Collins down in the 10th round, Chris Eubank showboated and backed off. This angered his trainer, Ronnie Davis. Collins must somehow get through this round. He's called two good right hands. Eubank is talking to him in there. These two gaining an extremely healthy respect for each other. This is a big round for Eubank, but has he really cashed in on that initiative? He's stepped back, nothing more as the bell goes, but that was a 10-8 round for Chris Eubank. Just to explain, the rounds normally scored 10 points to the winner, 9 to the loser. If there's a knockdown, it would be scored 10 points to 8. In between rounds, trainer Virgil Hunter bizarrely whispered instructions to his fighter, Brandon Gonzalez. HBO commentator Jim Lampley dubbed Hunter the fight whisperer. What you need is to keep going on and whoop the man. He's ready to be whooped, okay? Don't throw one and then let him get away. He can't figure you out. He's ready to be whooped, man. He's ready to be whooped. He's ready to be whooped. Prove it, man. Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away. It's the last round. It's yours. Look at me. Don't let it get away. This is the last round. Virgil Hunter literally whispering to Brandon Gonzalez in the corner. The fight whisperer. Virgil Hunter. <laughs> Norman Stone, the former trainer of John Ruiz, was known for his explanative-filled rants before, during, and after fights. Coming into the 12th and final round against Hasim Rockman, Stone, to put it mildly, urged Ruiz to put some hurt on Rockman. Si se traba, Johnny, all you're going to do is move on this guy this round. Pop, pop, but you can't let him get the upper hand. We lost fights because of the 12 rounds. Stone, yeah, come on, man. Listen. Kick his fucking ass. Kick his fucking ass. The ever explosive Norman Stone, the 12th and final round. In 2011, Alexander Povetkin got his first shot at a world title against Ruslan Chagayo. Nervousness for even having to go to the bathroom often. Povetkin started well and clearly won the first three rounds. Your trainer, your trainer has to be able to tell you what to do and you, you need to be able to. Povetkin landing a couple of times there in that sequence. Because you're thinking a title fight, you think it's different. Now you know it's the same. No, it's the same. No different. Like 21 other fights that we won. I think the fourth round was his. And Shagayev's left caught him in the left, oh, right here. That was the second left Shagayev landed this round. Chagayov stepped up his aggression and offense in the fourth and fifth round before dominating the sixth round, hurting Povetkin several times with left and right hooks. He's inside the ring shape. Good left hand by Chagayev there, caught Povetkin. And that caught Povetkin because he was against the last two in a row. Staggers him there. Couple of lefts. Another left landed by Chagayev. And a right hand. Chagayev, he's in attack mode. Povetkin's trainer, Teddy Atlas, sensed that the fight was slipping away, so he began to give pep talks to Povetkin in his corner. Okay. You only have to be strong for 18 minutes. Okay, this is going to last 18 minutes, going to be over with. But what you do here is going to last forever. It's going to be your history. It's going to be your family's history. It's going to be your reputation. Can you be strong for 18 minutes? Can you be strong? Okay. Yes. All right. Man, that's motive. That's how you motivate a fighter. Get him going. That was straight out of the Rocky movies. 
In round seven and eight, Pavekin appeared fatigued, which allowed Chigayev to largely outwork him. Chigayev very light on his feet right now. And that's the difference, being light on your feet. He wanted, when he turned down the Klitschko fight, any punch that you're going to receive, you're going to feel it. Very important to keep moving because obviously he's going to, you know, and try some of the new things that uh, Teddy has given him. At the end of round eight, Atlas called on Pavekin to fight for his father, Vladimir, who had passed away the previous year. Chris Mannix, what are you, where do you have it at right now? I've got Shigayev up by two rounds through eight. Well, now listen to me. You believe in magic? Magic. Sometimes we can bring people that left us back. We can bring your father back tonight. You know why? Because they're going to talk about his son, the new world champion. And when they talk about him, they're going to be thinking about his father. Motivated by the words from Atlas, Pavekin stepped up the pace and landed quick and powerful combinations in the ninth round. Good combination, yeah. Povetkin coming alive. Povetkin's come out with more vigor here in this round nine. With one minute left. Couple good body shots there by Povetkin. Final seconds of round nine. Good rebound round for Povetkin. Povetkin continued to take the fight to Chigayev in the last three rounds and looked the stronger of the two at the final bell. He's, he's definitely got the second win. He's looking a lot better. He's throwing some good combinations. Povetkin throwing some nice combinations along the ropes. That, that sparks me up and lights a fire under me. There's that combination. That the work he needs to be trying. Yeah, I think you got to give Teddy Atlas a lot of credit. Uh, he pushed that motivational button in those middle rounds and it seems to have really paid off for Povetkin. Very important. It seems like Shigayev was wanting to do a certain thing. He wanted to land that left hand, but... Teddy Atlas rushed the center of that ring to get his fighter's arms up. And if you saw that replay of Teddy, he looked up in the heaven, looked at Povetkin and said, that one was true for your father. After winning by unanimous decision, Povetkin held up pictures of his late father. I think the trainer really made a big difference for Povetkin, and uh, Teddy did a great job of motivating him and said the right things. In between rounds, HBO Boxing would often bring in enthusiastic translator Ray Torres to translate what was being said in the corners. What was he saying? Uh, he says that he did not quit. He, he's a he's a man. He's a he's a whole heart. Like we always know that what what a brave and type of person he is. Here are three of Ray Torres's funniest translations. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you, you gotta pressure him, and if you have to hit him in the ball, hit him in the ball. Hey, if he hits you in the ball, hit him back in the ball. If he hits you in the ball, you hit him back. You gotta be first. That uppercut may have been the punch that Mayorga was saying. That, hey, this guy can fight. Hey, hey, that black guy, he hits hard. Look at the replay, but I believe Raheem's glove touched the canvas. Okay, Eric, deep breath now. Come on, let me, let me put some water on your ball. Last round. In the last 10 seconds of round 10, Juan Manuel Marquez landed a brutal body shot on Robbie Peden. I really hate to see a fighter just take off and quit fighting at a certain point. And one thing Peden has going for him here is that Marquez has hit him a lot, but clearly has not been able to discourage him. After walking back to his corner and sitting down, Peden began vomiting blood into his trainer's bucket. A ringside official checking on Peden then immediately called off the fight. You saw him vomit into the bucket and you heard Roger Bloodworth say, you can't fight like that. 
In 2003, James Tony and Vasily Jirov produced a cruiserweight battle for the ages. Would we'll ever just take a break and lay back for a minute? Tony will take complete control. Right hand by Tony wobbled to Jirov. Jirov takes three more shots in a row. Tony's big opportunity right here. Yes, it is. Another big rally, and here goes Jirov back to the body. Before the 12th and final round, Tony's trainer, Freddie Roach, felt that the fight was very close and told him to put Jirov on the canvas. Okay, JT, now here, listen to me, all right? Championship of the world right here, this round, okay? You gotta put this guy on his ass. I'm serious now, okay? All right? All right. He, he out hustles you that round. You don't let him out hustle you. Come on, baby. Come on. Okay. Freddie Roach told his fighter the, the truth. In 1993, McClellan recorded the fastest win in middleweight championship history after he folded Jay Bell with a body shot in 20 seconds. This is round one, scheduled for 12.